Hey, so today I want to take a look at this new uh, vulnerability that just came out related to Microsoft Outlook. Um, it's a privilege escalation vulnerability where you can use a UNC path inside of an Outlook appointment reminder to get somebody's NTLM hashes. Um, so far in testing, it looks like it could be zero click, uh, which would be absolutely devastating because then you could just just kind of spray and pray this thing all over the place and if you're getting SMB outbound or if you're already inside their network you're going to get hashes you're going to be able to pass the hash if you have the you know, right uh, configurations on all the hosts um, and so, so it could really be a bad one so here I have pulled up uh, MDSEX uh, research into this where they had noticed inside of some of the patch notes that Microsoft had addressed this with a new um, uh, release of Microsoft Outlook. Um, digging into it, they realized that you could actually, inside of the PID LID reminder file parameter, uh, you could actually specify your own UNC path to override um, uh, basically the ding that you hear when you get an Outlook message. Um, and as with all things Microsoft, if you can provide the UNC path, they will provide the hashes. Uh, God forbid they, they fix that one day. Um, so this is another case of you provide the UNC, They'll, they'll cough up the hashes without uh, really you having to do anything else, which is what makes this so devastating. If you can get an appointment to land on somebody's calendar and pop that reminder, they have Outlook open at the time, they're on a domain, and, and you're able to exfiltrate SMB outbound or you're on their network, then you've got hashes to pass around um, or, or just to crack simply. So I did want to dig into this. Um, I'll put a link to this article inside of the description. Um, all original research was done by Dominic Shell here. Um, great job. Uh, it's really uh, uh, unable to describe it. it. It's a beautiful exploit <laughs> in how simple it is, but how devastating that it could be. Uh, it's really neat. So there's a couple different POCs floating around right now, specifically there's some based off of Dominic's work um, that use .NET Framework and specific, specifically uh, Message Kit. I did look at that. Um, you know, it, it works. It's a bit more complicated than scripting language because it's built in .NET. So there are some POCs dropping. This one I have found to be extremely effective, super simple, to the point. Um, and this one's by Katana. I'll put a link to this one as well really like i said super straightforward he's using com or they are using com objects um and, and just pulling up outlook basically via vba um and creating a message replacing the unc link sending it off with a reminder and it's it's super effective i've found in, in my testing so far of all the ones that are out there and available this one's probably the most straightforward and the, the one i like the most in terms of ease of use and, and simplicity and how it, he, he notated it really well um so inside this one inst instantiating a um, outlook application go ahead and create the item give it a subject body so just like you would a real email right uh, uh, locations virtual you can change all of these parameters um, so we do set a reminder to true that's necessary for this exploit uh, meeting importance so you could actually make this normal uh, high importance you know that type of thing if you've ever if you're familiar with outlook um, then you add your recipient so this is where we would put our victim Reminder for meeting start, so if you want a 15 minute reminder prior to the meeting start time, that's where you would set that. Uh, that's what they have in there by default. And then the meeting is set 16 minutes into the future. So once you send this one minute after you sent it, you should get your reminder. The meeting duration is 30 minutes and then it is going to play the sound and override the sound. That's where we're gonna specify the remainder, uh, reminder sound file, which is your UNC path. So that would be like an SMB share. Windows uh, will automatically authenticate to that SMB share. 
as long as you're not blocking SMB outbound, or if you're on the network, you're in like a trusted um, area on the network, then it will automatically authenticate to it no matter what. So it's it's really cool when the reminder pops, it's gonna go look for this like dot wave file. Um, it's obviously not gonna find it unless you are hosting one, but you're gonna have say responder running and it's going to authenticate to responder automatically cough up all your hashes and then that's it i mean profit <laughs> right so and then meeting save meeting send um overall super simple script really straightforward it's one of the, one of the simplest uh pocs that i've seen out there at this point so if you actually go in and you look at the documentation via microsoft's developer uh, resources you can see where you can look at the uh, appointment item object and you can actually look and find the reminder override uh no reminder file override sound file there we go. so there's some different places that you can use this but they, they have some good references for it and essentially you can go through and recreate this however you would like. Um, there's some really good documentation on it. It would lead me to believe that within Outlook, and I'm sure there's already others looking into this, there's probably other objects in here where you could do the exact same thing. Um, so area for research, uh, I don't know, looks good though. <laughs> so let's go ahead and hop in, I'll do a POC, we'll take a look at it so that you can see in action everything I just explained. Okay, so we're going to be switching back and forth between a couple different views here. On the one side where I'm actually in the image, um, you're going to be seeing a Windows 10 VM where I am signed in uh, to my profile and that's where the exploit is going to occur, where the payload's going to pop and you're actually going to see my hashes come from that device. Um, on the other device, that is a separate device that I'm on. That's where I'm going to run the PowerShell script, and that's also where we're going to monitor for hashes um, via RDP onto a responder server that I have out on the internet. So I've populated everything inside of PowerShell, set my uh, destination, I left all the really all the la the rest of it uh, to defaults, and we'll go ahead and run that. Pull up responder, get it running. And then if we watch over here on the Outlook side, that will pop here shortly. And then we will see all the hashes start to rain in. A few moments later. And there we go. Now you can see that we are getting all the hashes on my attacking device after the payload has triggered on my victim device. Um, again, as you saw, my cursor stayed in the same place. No click. I just had it open, automatically took the meeting, and um, uh, ran it. I haven't, I don't have multiple accounts to test it with, so I, I may have to recruit one of my coworkers and, and see if they're cool with me dumping their hash if possible. But so far it appears to be zero click. That may not be the case when you're using different accounts. Um, you know, I'm using my account to send and receive. So automatically I am accepting the meeting, right? Because I'm the one who created the meeting. That may not be the case. It, it could vary dependent on how that person's account is set up. Some people automatically accept, automatically tentatively accept meetings. Um, it could vary based off of a number of things like that. And um, how, how essentially you're forcing it onto the victim's calendar or how they're forcing it onto their own calendar. But um, either way, it, it's not untenable to believe that you could easily convince somebody to accept a meeting invite. Um, it looks like it's uh, it's going to be a devastating one. So pivoting off of that, how do we then defend against this? Well, one, update Outlook, right? <laughs> but for two, how do we prevent something like this? Uh, uh, essentially, it's not a zero day, but something that hits us quick, fast, and in a hurry that has a widespread impact like this. How do we address that um, when it comes to something that can exfiltrate hashes? 
one and and really the simplest is to not allow SMB outbound out of your network. Whether you set that through a GPO into Windows Defender or Windows Windows Firewall to prevent it outbound, whether you're on an enterprise network and you prevent it outbound, whether you're using your EDR or your AV and you're preventing it outbound, or ideally all of those things and preventing SMB outbound. Um, you really unless you have a really odd use case you almost are never going to be connecting to shares um, out on the internet uh, that's that's really an internal resource type thing only beyond that you know obviously make sure you have all of your um, you know administrators and things like that inside the protected users group you know t all the typical um, <laughs> AD network strengthening uh, controls uh, would apply here, but specifically the SMB outbound. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully you learned something and you got to see something cool and um, hope you're able to address it and get it fixed in your environment. Thanks.